So let's look at how we can calculate the change in the electric potential energy for the electrostatic case. This is very similar to calculating the change in the gravitational potential energy for the gravitational case. But note how I said the electrostatic case. So we're going to assume that our electric fields are not changing. Now this isn't always the case in the everyday world. Imagine that we had a charged particle here which is creating an electric field. If we bring another charged particle into the field created by this electric field, both these particles apply a force on each other. So this force could cause this original particle to move. But we're neglecting that now. We're assuming that this original particle is not free to move, so it's locked in place and the electric field is not changing. So this is why it's known as the electrostatic case. So let's start by considering a simple example where we have a constant electric field. So let's consider the constant electric field here going down the page and we'll put four points in our electric field A, B, C and D and we'll calculate how much work the electric field does as it moves from one of these points to the other. Now this is known as the electrostatic work. So it's the work done by the electric field. If the particle was initially at rest at A, to get it up to B, we'd need some external force doing work on the object to get it up to B. But we're not considering the work done by the external force, we're considering the work done by the electrostatic field, which will have the opposite sign to the work done by that external force. So just make sure that you keep this in mind when you're reading questions and calculating works. You need to check if it's asking for the work done by an external force or the work done by the electric field. Okay, so if we want to calculate the work done by the electric field as it moves from A to B, we'll need to use our formula that the work done is equal to F dot ds. Now the force in this case is the electrostatic force and the electrostatic force is given by minus EQ where E is the magnitude of the electric field that we've drawn here. So we've got our integral from YA to YB of minus EQ dS. When we do that integral we end up with minus EQ YB minus YA. So YB minus YA is positive as YB is higher than YA. So this is what we expect in this case as the force from the electric field is acting in the opposite direction to the direction that the charged particle is moving. Now this means that it has gained potential energy when it's gone from A to B. If we left it at B, it would then use this potential energy to gain kinetic energy to move back to A. Let's now consider the work done by the field as it moves from B to C. Well, as it moves from B to C, the electric force in the electric field is going down the page while the displacement is going across the page. So these are perpendicular to each other. So using our equation work is equal to the integral of F dot ds, when F and ds are perpendicular to each other, this is zero. So we don't need to do any electrostatic work to move it from B to C. Now, if it moves from C to D, we can calculate the electrostatic work once again. So when we're doing that, just remember that C and B have the same height. So YC and YB are the same, and YD and YA are the same. So the work done by the electric field is equal to minus the integral of the force dot ds, which is equal to the integral we're ending at ya and we're starting at yb, so those are the limits on our integral, times minus eq is still minus eq because the electric field is still going down in the negative y direction, ds, which is equal to minus eq times ya minus yb, which we can also write as eq yb minus ya. So this has got the same magnitude as going from a to b, but it's got the opposite sign. So in this case, this is positive because the electric field, the electric force and the displacement are in the same direction. 
And then again, if we consider going from D to A, in that situation, the electric force and the displacement are perpendicular. So there is no work done in that case. So around this closed path, the electrostatic work is equal to zero. They completely cancel each other out. So this suggests that the electrostatic force, at least in this case, is a conservative force. So later we'll look at a radial field and show that the electrostatic force is also conservative in that case.